Welcome to the Southeast Retirement Planners Podcast, where we will go beyond the balance sheet with our guests, not only to share from our personal experience as financial advisors of over 25 plus years, but also to learn from our guests about the issues and topics that are important to them. Our firm specializes in taking care of the financial plans for individuals and small businesses by helping our clients identify their individual goals and taking a conservative and ongoing approach to helping accomplish them. We are located in Hickory, North Carolina, and look forward to continuing to serve our clients and our community. Thank you for joining us. We hope you enjoyed this week's episode. Hello, I'm Ryan Edwards with Southeast Retirement Planners, and we're happy that you're joining us today on the Southeast Retirement Planners podcast. I'm sitting here today with uh, attorney Susanna Brown. We're happy to have her, and we're going to be talking about... uh, the essentials of estate planning, uh, a topic that we we cover within our firm. We don't draw up the documents, but we work with our clients' attorneys to make sure that their accounts are set up appropriately, and uh, one day they pass along to the people that they they want them to pass along to. So, um, I'm uh, we we uh, think very highly of Suzanne and what she, the way she serves her clients and the expertise she brings, and uh, we're happy to have her here and uh, was able to get on her calendar today. So thank you, thank you for coming. So, so tell me, Suzanne, I'll just allow you to kind of tell you tell tell me or tell us a little bit about. Uh, your practice, where it's located, and uh, here in downtown Hickory, obviously, but uh, tell us a little bit about your focus and how how you do things. Sure, Um, and first of all, thank you so much for having me. Mm -hmm. I appreciate it. Um, I So, like Ryan said, I'm Susanna Brown. I'm with the law firm of Anthony & Brown, and we're located at 430 1st Avenue Northwest here in downtown Hickory, and my practice basically is elder law, um, which is estate planning, asset protection for long-term care. We do um, estate administration, uh, so that is when people die. We do probate, we do trust administration, we do special needs planning. Um, Just basically all of the stuff that has to do with um, kind of of end-of-life stuff and not necessarily end-of-life, but you know, all the stuff that you should plan for if you want to leave stuff to people you love um, when you pass away. Right. Okay. Well, good. Well, I, that's a, a good way to explain it. And um, a lot of times we get asked, you know, kind of what, what's the process or or why would I need someone to draw up official documents? Um, maybe walk us through, if you would, the process of, of someone when they come into your office. What does that look like? Sure. Um, so... Usually people will just call and make an appointment, and with intake, the paralegal will normally try to get a little bit of an idea about what they want to accomplish, Mm -hmm. um, because that helps me out, (laughs) so I can have at least a little bit of uh, preparation beforehand to know what I'm walking Mm -hmm. into. And I, I sit down with a client, and my goal is to figure out what their goal is. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, if it is to protect their loved ones, if it is to make sure that assets pass to someone or to make sure they definitely don't pass to someone, <laughs> right. um, I get that too. Uh, you know, it, it, I've been doing this for a good long while now, and I've seen it all, um, mm-hmm. I think, or at least I feel like I've seen a lot right, of it. Right. And I just, uh, my goal is to protect my clients and make sure that, you know, we accomplish what they want. And so it is just a matter of fact finding um, uh, as to what they desire. A lot of times we'll go through who their family members are, uh, an idea of their assets, and just figuring out what kind of documents are going to best serve their needs. Right. Um, and the easiest way to get there. Yeah. Well, a lot of people think, uh, you know, just when we're talking about the essentials of estate planning, uh, I know you told me one time everybody wants to talk about their will, but let's, I think, well, and I use this line, I've stolen it from you uh, several times, but you all, you, you made the comment that everybody wants to talk about the, the their will and what's going to happen when they die, but there's a better chance of you needing the proper legal documents for when you're alive. Absolutely. And then, and, and, and so the, the essential documents, just um, uh, explain what those three or four items are, if you would. Just list them out, and we'll talk more thoroughly. And let me just say, I'm so appreciative that you <laughs> stole that um, because I want you to tell people that. Mm-hmm. Um, so when I sit down with clients, one of the very first things I tell them is I want to look after them while they're breathing. 
Um, okay. I'll get to the death part in a minute, but I want to look after them while they're here. Um, and it's such a big deal. And that starts out with those powers of attorney. Mm-hmm. Um, and so the financial or durable power of attorney is such an important document. And so many people neglect to do it. Mm-hmm. And, you know, if you're ever incapacitated, I don't want um, you to leave it in the hands of a judge, essentially a stranger, to decide who's going to make decisions for you. I want you to have already had those documents in place that the ones you trust, you know, that you have decided who's going to do that for you. And that's, so I kind of say that the power bill is still going to come and it's, these going to be, it's going to be needed to be paid. Exactly. And who's going to, who's going to have access to your checkbook. And talk about a powerful access right there. Um, You better make sure that you have, thought long and hard about who's going to have that kind of access. Right. Um, I tell people that is an extraordinarily powerful document, especially the kind that I tend to like to craft. Um, I tell people I like to put more tools in the toolbox than fewer when mm-hmm. I do that, um, especially from an asset protection standpoint. Right. Uh, you know, you if you're going to allow your agent, which is the person you name in that document, to have the ability to you know, do asset protection on your behalf or, you know, what kind of things you're going to allow them to do for you, then we've got to give them the power to do it. Well, a lot of times those are really, really powerful things, um, such as being able to deal with land transactions and gifting and all sorts of things. So you better think long and hard about who you're going to put on that document. Um, But that being said, again, it doesn't mean you don't need it. You, you need those, you need someone who you trust implicitly or as implicitly as you can, right. um, that always has your best interest at heart. Right. Um, so that's the that's the kind of the durable power of attorney or financial, the financial. Te- the mm-hmm. financial. And then the other power of attorney is, is your medical power of attorney. Is that the proper wording of that? Yeah, health care power, power of attorney, medical power of attorney. Um, and again, same, same concept. If you're incapacitated, we want to make sure that you have – designated who that person is that you trust to make health care decisions for you Um, if you're in a car accident and someone's got to decide if you receive surgery that's risky or not well who's that person going to be and you know you don't want family members fighting over that decision at that point in time there's already lots of emotion involved Um, exactly so that that's a very obviously that allows them to talk to the doctor on your behalf and, and make those decisions so those are the two power of attorneys there. And then also the medical power of attorney, they're, they're the one that can communicate to the doctors, and correct me if I'm wrong, but also they help carry out maybe what individuals call the living will, or is that, or, or it's got several different names, but yeah. uh, uh, explain a little bit more about that. for the, natural death, all, yes. it can go by different pull, things. Pull the plug or not. There That's you what go. I say, you know, pull, <laughs> you know, do you want to put, uh, you know, I, I tell, you know, sometimes you got different people that have different views, but you're able to walk them through that and make sure that there's a document to uh, carry out what they want to have done if they can't communicate it for themselves. That's right. And sometimes, um, you know, that document, which, like you said, the pull the plug document, declaration for a natural death, um, living will, whatever you want to call it, it can either be combined with the health care power of attorney or it can be a separate document. It doesn't matter. But it's, it's an end-of-life kind of document that says whether or not you want to be kept alive on machines. Mm-hmm. Um, and you get to make sure that you have already designated, you know, whether you want to make that decision for your future self or if you want to designate your agent to make that decision for you. I mean, it just makes sure yeah. you have kept control of the situation even in incapacitation. Correct, you correct. Know, you've yeah. let yourself make sure that – you don't just be kept alive by machines and a lot of, and, and I know that's probably, unfortunately, in this time with COVID and coming out of COVID, it's always been an issue, but people are, you know, you hear a little bit more about it now and the importance of a document like that because it really, the way I said, it really takes the burden off your family because you've already, in essence, made that decision I hear for that them, a lot. right? So yeah. you're protecting your your wishes, but also the, the stress uh possibly for your your loved ones exactly and I I do whenever I'm going over that document with clients I hear that um that many people want to take the stress and burden of that off of their children or other loved ones because they had to live through that Mm -hmm. burden um and they don't want to 
they don't want their children to relive that. Right. Um, so those are three, the power of attorney, medical power of attorney, and, and living will. Correct. We'll call it. And then the fourth would be the will. The will. And that, there's um, the one that uh, the everybody wants to talk about the first. The trust <laughs> or, you know, it, it all depends on what, what your situation calls for. And all the will or a trust is is a way to dispose of property upon your death. Um, that's all it is. People have a tendency to glorify trust or think that they're all that complicated. A trust is just another way of disposing of your stuff when you die. That's all mm-hmm. it is. Um, so, you know, wills are, are documents that lay out and make sure that your wishes are carried out. Um, if you don't, then you will have been deemed to have died intestate. And then North Carolina law or whatever state you know, you're from is going to go and have laws that dictate what happens. And I prefer for my clients to have already you know, made that decision as to where they want their stuff, not in the state of North Carolina. Right. Um, and exactly. so exactly. you get to make the decision if you have your will um, properly laid out. Okay. And a trust does essentially the same thing. And a lot of people think estate planning is this big, it's a big word, so it has to be complicated. And I think you just shared, you know, it doesn't have to be that complicated at all. Now, I've sat in meetings with you where it's been pretty darn complicated, darn (laughs) complicated, very much. So I can't, so complicated, I can't even say the word. But nonetheless, you know, it's it's important. And you, I know for myself, an instance, um, you've helped myself and Amanda. I have two underage as, as a court is 13 and nine. And, you know, uh, I want them to be taken care of, but of with them being underage, you know, you, you don't necessarily want to put their, uh, the assets in their name while they're underage. You don't want them to go do something crazy. Uh, exactly. When they turn 18 exactly. or 21. Yeah. So <laughs> I always say everybody has high hopes for their kids, but when they turn 18 and join the rock band and move to you know, move out west, and you, so know, they, they, you got to have some protection features on it if you're not around, I think, or some people have different views, but that that's where the will can come in place. Absolutely. Uh, um, those wills can have um, trust within them that allow you to protect those minor children um, or underage children, correct, um, correct. and you get to dictate the age that you think mm-hmm. those kids are going to be old enough mm-hmm. to handle, you know, assets for mm-hmm. themselves, and Again, that's a gift you're giving your kids because, unfortunately, if you give kids a lot of money um, at a young age, many times they're not at an age responsible or they're not responsible enough to understand um, the gravity of what they've been given. And you also can make them a sitting duck for abuse Mm -hmm. um, or for predators. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, we've seen that also. And so you just want to make sure that you do protect your children. And, you know, you can still make sure they benefit from those assets and at the same time protect them. Right. Um, Right. That's a, now you, you, you brought up a topic, you know, making sure you have the right documents in place, but it's one thing to talk about them and it's another to, um, you know, to actually do something about it. And, and I know that what makes the documents official? Because I know people come in and they're like, well, it's if I go see an attorney, it's going to come with a big bill. Now, my answer to that is get the right documents in place, pay for it, and sleep well at night. Yeah. And, and forget about, you know, just go forward, do what you're supposed to and need to do, and make sure it's official. So somebody said, well, I can pull this up online, and I can do my own. But to me, that scares me. And, right. and, and what does it take? Yeah, they could probably go through doing it online, I guess. I haven't never walked through it. But what does it take to make those documents, whatever document is, official? Um, well, let me, let me say this, and I'll answer the official part, and then I'll speak to the online part. Mm-hmm. Um, so official, and it varies state to state. Um, each state will have their different qualifications for what's official. But for a will in North Carolina, you got to have two witnesses, um, disinterested witnesses. They can't Mm -hmm. benefit from your demise and be a witness. Um, You've got to have a notary that can't also be a witness to that will. Um, You want to have them self-proving, preferably, because it makes probate easier, um, which that just means that you are of sound mind under no constraint or undue influence, um, Mm -hmm. um, along with the witnesses. Um, For the power of attorney, you want it to have it notarized. For the health care power of attorney, it's basically the same thing for um, 
a will, you've got to have two witnesses, and you've got to have it notarized. And they also cannot be healthcare professionals um, okay. who witness it. But I will say from a going online kind of standpoint, there are forms online that can actually be very good. Mm-hmm. Um, and th- that surprises some people when I say that, but they can be. Um, I'm, I'm not going to knock some of the forms, but here's my caveat to that. I don't think I'm ever going to lose a job because of some of these um, online legal forums or um, legal websites that sell these things. In fact, if anything, I think they probably boost my um, (laughs) uh, clientele. (laughs) And let me explain why. Because a form is a very, very, very small part of estate planning. And that's the piece that people mess up. You know, you can have a beautifully drawn trust. Mm -hmm. You can have a beautifully drawn will. And if you don't understand that how the different assets flow into your estate, you know, if you don't fund your trust correctly, if you don't have beneficiary designations in a certain manner that they would flow into a trust that's in a will, or if you don't have, you know, you don't understand that if you have a deed that all of a sudden is a joint thrive survivorship, you know, that would pass outside of your estate. If you don't understand all of those things, I don't care what your will says. Mm -hmm. I don't care what your trust says. You didn't do anything. (laughs) So, uh, you know, estate planning is far more than just a document. Right. I know that we've, we've been in a couple conversations or a couple meetings together where someone's come to us and then we, we don't, we're not experts by any means on the legal side of it, but They've, in essence, bought a notebook by a traveling salesman that's told them that their estate plan is taken care of, but they literally have nothing done. Right. They they've they have had nothing, and they say they have it done, but all they have is a, a nice-looking notebook. That's it. And that's I think that's unfortunately how some people are, are surprised by that and have spent a lot of money for that, uh, probably more money than if they would have just come in to see someone like yourself right and that's where I tell clients if they have their financial planner their CPA and their attorney all on the same page Mm -hmm. you're doing great yes yes. because if (laughs) if those people all you know Uh are clicking and understand what your intent is and are working together you're going to be good well that's why we you know uh, partner with individuals like yourself Susanna and I mean you you do a great job for our uh, clients that we've sent they've sent nothing but praise and uh We've been able to help some of your clients as well, Absolutely. and, and uh, we're, we're thankful for that as well. We, um, um, I wanted to just bring up something that I, I think is, is maybe not neat, or, or <laughs> I think it is. It's very, once these documents are in place, it's just a, a secure way to keep them. I know that everybody uses a lockbox or a safe, but you shared with us that, um, uh, there's what used to be called North Carolina Life Links, but now it's it's they've complicated it. To, they uh, have. <laughs> the, they they now call it Advanced Health Care Directive Registry, um, and it's with the Secretary of State, and it's just a nice, really cheap way. It's ten dollars for the life of the document. That if for your health care power of attorney and your living will, you can always get that thing registered with them, and you get a little card, you get two of them. Mm-hmm. And I always tell clients, keep it behind your driver's license. And mm-hmm. anytime someone asks, have you got a health care power of attorney, have you got a living will, just hand them that card. And it's a barcode, right? Yeah, as long mm-hmm. as they've got, as I think it's actually a passcode. Is it? Okay. Yeah, as long as they've got internet access, they can pull that thing up. Um, so it's just really nice to have because nobody keeps those documents on them. And even if they somebody stole your wallet, they can't do anything with a with it with it exactly so it's, it's a, and it's you know spouses um, spouses keep each other's you oh, know, yeah, for them exactly. or if you're taking care of an elderly uh, uh, parent member or or just Aunt another or whomever. Uh, whoever it is that you may be called and uh, that's a nice document to have for their benefit you don't have to go scrounging when a document document may be needed absolutely um, um, and it's just nice again because nobody keeps those right. on them or will. I don't. I don't, <laughs> I don't think too many people do. No, um, I, I don't. I, I've never seen one turned over necessarily at a, <laughs> at a hospital. They always ask, but uh, I've never seen it. But um, anyway, I uh, I just think that that's a, a very helpful and useful thing, and it makes people sleep better at night, yeah. I, I do believe, and, and making sure you have the, those in a safe place. Um, 
Well, we've covered a number of topics today, and I'm thankful that we've been able to do so. Um, you know, if, if, if anyone has questions concerning uh, estate planning that uh, uh, we know uh, with our conversations with clients or individuals we don't currently work with, that we, we always bring up these items to check to see if they, they have them in place. And, uh, you know, after a client may uh, come into your office or an attorney's office uh, elsewhere and, and they've got the documents they need, uh, we we communicate back and forth to make sure if there's changes that need to be made to the titling of an account or the beneficiary right. uh, type names. You know, we'll, we'll not just do it on the, the accounts we have, but also an employer retirement plan, making sure that all the beneficiaries are aligned up appropriately is, is what uh, they've, they've lined out in their estate plan. So that's very important. And uh, I, I think that you got to have it's great to have all your your people on the same page like you said your your financial advisor your attorney your cpa th those uh, and that's what we try to do is really serve as a quarterback for our clients and uh, putting those pieces together so i uh, uh, once again thankful you joined us today um, we're going to wrap up today. This was our uh, Essentials of Estate Planning podcast. And if you'd like more information on the topic today, you're, you're welcome to call uh, uh, Susanna at her office, which we, we've been showing her um, uh, phone number and email address on, on the screen behind us. But uh, if you are, are clients and, and haven't picked up on that, you can certainly call our office and we'll get, get you in touch with her. Um, to find out more about our um, Affirming the services we provide, you can find us online at seretirementplanners.com. We offer individuals that we don't currently work with an opportunity to come in and meet with us. Uh, a complimentary financial checkup is what we call it. So uh, we'll cover these items and uh, hopefully uh, uh, learn more about each other. Uh, so thank you once again for joining us. Uh, once again, I'm Ryan Edwards with Susanna Brown, and we hope you have a great day. Thank you. Securities and advisory services offered through LPL Financial, a registered investment advisor, member of FINRA, SIPC. Southeast Retirement Planners is not affiliated with LPL Financial or registered as a broker dealer or investment advisor.